Blue Table fans, today we're going to talk about poisoned weapons. And we find ourselves in the ruined wreckage of a city from the 41st millennium. Certainly a dystopian future because, boy, things are bleak. And for our friends here, they don't know how bad their life is going to be. Because there's a hive tyrant waiting for them just around the corner here and also backing him up a squad of Ormagons. And we will get into the details later. So right now, without looking it up, tell me what Dark Eldar warriors and Ormagons have in common. That is correct. They both have poisoned weapons. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, as well as some other features of the Warhammer 40k game. We're going to do a little vignette here, a tiny little mini battle report. So let's go ahead and roll off for who goes first in this little scenario. We'll start with the Dark Eldar, rolling a three, and the Tyranids rolling a three. Tie, Dark Eldar, four, and Tyranids, six. So we'll move the Tyranids first, but first let's talk about the Dark Eldar weaponry. The basic Dark Eldar Warrior comes equipped with a splinter rifle, rifle, which is a rapid-fire weapon that goes 24 inches and is poisoned on a 4+. plus. Now, the thing to remember about poisoned weapons is that they always wound on a fixed number, which is noted in their unit entry. And in this case, 4+. plus. Now, if it doesn't say it, just says they're poisoned for some reason, then it defaults to 4+. plus. The strength of a poisoned weapon that's ranged, if it doesn't say, it defaults to strength one. In close combat, it defaults to the strength of the wearer or the noted strength in the war gear entry. All right, let's move our Tyranids. First off, the Hive Tyrant moves. Now, he has wings, which makes him a jump monstrous creature. So he can either use his jump pack, quote unquote, in the movement phase or the assault phase. Now, since pre-measuring is allowed, I'm going to check the distance here and see that I'm 20 inches away, which means even if I move 12 inches, which looks something like, well, this is going to be hard with this building in the way. Let's go in through this door here. Okay, sometimes it's good to put your tape measure close to the board so you can get a more accurate measuring distance. One thing you have to be careful of is your opponent uh, might do his measuring up high and because of the angle that he's looking at it he might for example let's say my hive tyrants here and he can move 12 inches right but what if my opponent for example and perfectly innocently holds his tape measure up high like this and he moves like this but from his perspective the tape measure actually ends like that well he's moved a good four inches too far Another thing you want to watch out for is what I call jumping, which is a rookie mistake. You measure from the front of the base, 12 inches, to the front of the base, like that. A person that does jumping, quote unquote, uh, and I don't know if you can see this all on the screen here. How far do we go? Yep, we're good. Uh, who jumps his model, actually, if he was moving, say, six inches, just for the sake of argument, he would move not here, but he'd butt up the back of his model against the back, the front of the tape measure, which of course is an illegal move. And I believe it even notes that in the rule book. So if I measure through here that I move 12 and that my charge can potentially be 12, that means my maximum is 22 and I'm at 20 inches here. Plus I'd have to go through difficult terrain. So a monstrous creature ignores uh, dangerous terrain, which means, excuse me, a monstrous creature has the move through cover special rule, which means that it ignores dangerous terrain tests. So the question is, do I really want to take a chance with my hive tyrant? And the answer is yes. So, well, the other thing I could do is I could move behind this building here and possibly get a better shot, but the Dark Eldar warriors aren't going to sit still for that. So I'm going to force their hand and just move 12 inches. Again, I'll come in through this door so I get an accurate measurement. And I'll move 12 inches like that. And that means I need to roll a whopping 9 or 10 for my charge distance. 
In fact, uh, if I'm going to hit them, oh no, it's actually not that much, only eight inches. Okay, well, maybe I was wrong. Or maybe I did that jump wrong. Let's, uh, let's take another look here. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to get this just right for the sake of this example. So let's, let's do this total measurement again to the closest guy. And I will see that it is, yeah, it's uh, 19 and a half inches or 20 inches. So I must, have, I must have gone too far. Now these ruins are ruins when they're also, because there's a clearly defined base, they're also area terrain, which means that I will get a cover save whether or not I am 25% obscured. Of course, that won't matter because my armor save is plenty for these guys. In fact, let's just take a moment to take a look at the weaponry that the Dark Eldar Warriors have. They are armed all around with splinter rifles, which I've already described the stats for those. But there's also a splinter cannon here, which is, I gotta tell you, a really a quite handsome model. And the splinter cannon is range 36 inches and has AP5 and it's Assault 4, Poisoned 4 Plus. Now, poisoned weapons can't hurt vehicles, by the way. And uh, they are, unless otherwise noted, Strength 1. So uh, that's for ranged weapons. But it's, uh, it's also heavy six, which means if it doesn't move, it can fire six shots instead of just the, uh, just the four. And also, we've got a blaster in here. Let's find him. Where is he? Ah, there he is. Uh, by the way, a note about the Dark Eldar Warriors kit. It only has one blaster, and it's the only kit that makes Trueborn who can have four blasters. Uh, so there is a conversion you can do by snubbing off a splinter rifle and putting one of the exhaust ports from a Raider, which I believe it has extras on there, makes really quite a handsome uh, blaster conversion. So a blaster is eight, strength eight, AP2, assault one, lance, 18 inch range. So, uh, so the Tyranids have not moved entirely yet. The Ormagants here, they have a, they have a six inch movement, plus they run but they also have a special rule called Bounding Leap, which is they roll 3d6 for their run move, and then they uh, take the highest of that. So for the sake of expediency, I'm just gonna roll it all together here and just move them one time. So uh, that was not that good. I rolled a three, three, and a one, which six inches plus three inches. So in a way, I'm teaching you the wrong way. You'd have to do this during the, the shooting phase. So, um, but just for the sake of going a little bit faster, I'm doing that here. Now I am, uh, area terrain, uh, ruins, is difficult terrain. So I'm actually gonna bring them around to completely avoid that whole hassle. So I'll just move these guys all nine inches really quick. Uh, I usually take a lead model and uh, I just move that model. And then when I'm about halfway through, I just double check to make sure I'm not, I move my back guy and then I know the rest of them end up somewhere in the middle. And that, that makes that go about a ton faster. So let's go ahead and do shooting phase here and see if this hive tyrant can uh, put a dent in these warriors. And really, there ain't nothing they can do about it. And in fact, by the way, these warriors are seriously outgunned here. These warriors probably are weighing in at, um, let's see, I'm gonna guess at about 120 points. And we will take a look. Yeah, Kabbalite Warriors, a unit of 10 is 90 points. The Splinter Cannon is 10, and a Blaster is 15. So I'm at 115 points here. And that's assuming I don't have a Cyberite in that unit. So here come the Twin Link to Devourer shots, of which I have 12. All right, here we go, 12 shots. Rerolling ones, twos, and threes, because those are misses. So those were all hits, even though I bumped one of them onto a two. So that's nine hits, perfectly average. Strength six, uh, toughness three is two ups to wound. So there are two, four, six, eight wounds. Uh, unfortunately, I put my special weapons up near the front, which isn't too smart. And uh, so now let's roll to save. It is uh, five ups is the armor here. And look at all those, look at that. One, two, three, four, five saves. So I take three casualties. And that is Blam, Blam, and my Splinter Rifle. Whoops, hello. Sorry, you didn't get to see the taking off of the casualties. So these two guys were in front. So I take one, two, and then this guy's closest. Let's pretend like I had positioned those guys smarter. 
and that I had put a couple of my regular guys out in front. And um, so let's go ahead and get rid of those. Boy, that would have been disastrous, except I lucked out on my roll. And now, since the Ormagants ran, they cannot... Boy, Fleet is not as good as it used to be. Since they ran, they cannot charge. And besides, they're about 14 inches away, 16 inches away, maybe. So we've just got the uh, Hive Tyrant here. And he is going to attempt the charge. Let's go ahead and measure that. I always like to measure first and uh, see how far it is. And I actually made it a little harder on myself because I um, shot off about an inch off of my charge distance. All right, so the Hive Tyrant rolls his charge. Let's go. Uh, a whopping three, so that is a failed charge, and we're moving right on to the Dark Eldar. So the best move for the Dark Eldar, boy, they do not want to be anything anywhere close to these guys. And quite frankly, I wonder if maybe, just maybe, uh, I... Um, or I could just move right on in and see if I can kill that Hive Tyrant straight up and avoid these guys. So let's go ahead and uh, just check my distances here. So what I want to do is see how many guys are within 12 inches. It's almost all, it's all of them but two. So I'm going to go ahead and do two alternate realities here. And you can decide which one was the better move afterwards. I'm going to go ahead and do one reality where I just stay put, just so I can get that extra few shots off of my splinter cannon. So let's go ahead and start rolling them up, folks. Uh, now the splinter cannon is going to wound just the same as the other, so I may as well roll it exactly the same. So here what are my, sh what my shots look like from these guys. I've got two, four, six splinter rifle shots at less than 12 inches, two at over 12 inches, six from the splinter cannon, and one from the blaster. And let's roll them up. Now, ballistic skill four means I need three ups to hit. And here they come. So I take out my ones and twos. And... Over here, we've got, these are splinter weapons, poison. So poison, I mean, these are effectively strength six. So for my hits here, uh, looks like 11 of them, I need a four up to win. And that is um, slightly above average here, two, four, six, seven wounds. And my blaster, two up, I should have rolled that at the same time. So the blaster just straight up causes a wound because the Tyranid's armor is um, three up and the AP of the blaster is two, as I mentioned before. And uh, so that's a wound. And uh, the rest of these, I need to make saves. So here's the Tyranid player making his saves. Uh, I'm looking for three ups. And uh, I have a pretty good chance of dying right here because I only have four wounds and they've inflicted one. So if I fail three saves here, that flying hive pirate is toast. And, but I don't. I only take two wounds, and we will uh, just put those on right now with my handy-dandy Ding Skull Dice. By the way, I love these. Uh, they are a bit hard to find, uh, although if GW still makes them, let me know. So I've got two, and that is, that is all the Dark Eldar can do this turn. So let's go ahead and move over to the Tyranids. Let's go ahead and pull back and see where we are here. So this really is a big question. I've, give, I've taken three casualties, and uh, the Hive Tyrant has two wounds in this scenario. Now note that I'm using Tyranids as an example, not only of models that have poison, but models that really are vulnerable to poison, because Tyranids don't have tanks. They just have these big creatures, uh, which really don't do as well against poison as other things. So let's go ahead and just move right on along here. Um, and I'm going to make this very simple. So the Hive Tyrant is a monstrous creature. He ignores dangerous terrain tests. Uh, and he would have to take one because he is jump. He's a jump packer, so to speak. So I can just fly right on out here. Now, my alternative would be to use my normal six-inch ground movement and then use my, uh, my, quote, jump pack as a charge in order to charge in. And I could reroll my charge distance. But, and also get a Hammer of Wrath. 
Now, if I just walked out of here, I would need to do a difficult terrain test for which I'd roll uh, 3d6 and take the highest one. And then I could do Hammer of Wrath, which would give me a strength 6. A strength, excuse me, a strength 10, basically an impact hit, for those of you familiar with Warhammer Fantasy. Um, and I could also re-roll my charge distance. And quite frankly, that looks like, since there's only nine inches away here, that looks like my better option. So I'm going to go ahead and just walk out of the terrain. And I'm going to roll a five. So I'm going to get completely out here. Actually, a little bit, a little bit shy. So um, now... I only have to roll four on my charge distance. So um, let's go ahead and uh, roll the uh, bounding leap for the Ornagants. And again, I'm doing this out of order. I should do this in the shooting phase, but uh, with six inches plus five inches, I'm at 11. And that just makes this ever so simple. So we will see if these Dark Eldar warriors survive the day. The Hive Tyrant's feeling frisky, so we're going to go ahead and have him roll his um, roll his Twin Link Devourer. By the way, this this demonstration is completely unfair for the Dark Eldar. Uh, we'll see if they somehow manage to carry the day. It's basically 115 points versus two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, a hundred. It's four. It's it's four to one here. Three to one. So let's go ahead and do those twin link to devourers. And uh, we'll reroll misses. Slightly below average so far. And uh, slightly above average in the end. Looking for twos. And uh, there is a lot of wounds. Five ups to save. And uh, not a, a one save, two, four, six, seven guys die. So thus ends our demonstration. And uh, that, that was really super lopsided. Uh, let's go ahead and just continue just for, just for kicks uh, and assume that nobody died in that or maybe that the Hive Tyrant has a different set of weaponry, not so much ranged weapons. All right, let's do the charge here. And we're gonna roll the Hive Tyrant's charge. Now, the question is, and something I don't know, is if he's one quarter inch that difficult terrain, is he in difficult terrain? I'm gonna say yes. So what you do for that is you roll three dice and you, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Uh, monstrous creature move through cover rule uh, doesn't affect charges. So we uh, just um, roll three dice and we take the lowest two for the charge. Let's go ahead and make it so you can see that roll. I only need a four and uh, I got it. The lowest two is a seven. So in goes the, oh no wait, I shouldn't have actually rolled that yet. Uh, in the charge subphase, I uh, declare the charge and then there's overwatch. So let's go ahead and do two, four, six, eight, ten shots from splinter rifles. And six shots, excuse me, from the splinter cannon. And then one from the blaster and see if I can do anything there. So here it comes, looking for sixes. I dropped one on the ground. I'm just going to re-roll that. And uh, it does look like I get one, two. Look, the blaster hit. That's amazingly lucky. Blaster looking for a two up. Blaster wounds. So all I need is one wound here to get through. And I've just blown that hive tyrant up. So, oh, look at that. Not a single one. They were all ones and twos. So the hive tyrant has one wound remaining and he gets into close combat. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that. So with shooting of poisoned weapons, there isn't reroll to wounds like there is in close combat. Now the Ormagots, on the other hand, let's go ahead and discard this. Hey, the Hive Tyrant just went poof, poof. So now the Ormagots in close combat, let me illustrate how this works. So now poison, there's a rule that I use to keep this straight. It always has an advantage. So their strength is three. I've only given them toxin sacks, which gives them poison to begin with. So what would happen is the uh, poison, which would be four plus, but their strength is three, 
the toughness is three. So that means they'd get a four plus to wound anyway. Well, in that case, poison always conferring an advantage allows reroll to wound. So the Ormagons, I, I'm not even going to bother going through this. The Ormagons would just wipe these guys out uh, quite wretchedly, I might add, uh, just because of the sheer number of attacks. Uh, they'd get two attacks base, plus one for charging. That'd be 33 attacks, rerolling ones for sighting talons. Ormagons are really fantastic. In my Tyranid army, I always roll with at least two units of 20. Uh, they are, and the models are really super cool. I like to put gargoyle heads on them. But of course, you don't want to buy gargoyle kits just for that. Um, so uh, that is that is poison, folks. Thanks for tuning in and watching my unit of dark Eldar warriors die hideously. I might add that these warriors were a trade-in, which may or may not be up on the web store soon. I'm thinking of using them in some bat reps first. Um, be sure to check out our trade program. It is it takes out absolutely a huge chunk of the hassle of selling your miniatures secondhand and turning them into something fun that you're going to use and get joy and satisfaction from. Thanks for tuning in.